Then finally, for our interaction effect, we have a p-value of 0 0.047. That's close, but it is less than 0 0.05. So we can also say that the interaction is significant as well. And very briefly here, we have a measure of effect size for the two-way ANOVA, which is known as partial eta squared. Now there are no standards provided by Cohen for the two-way ANOVA. There are for the one-way ANOVA, but not for the two-way ANOVA. But you can just assume here, you can consider that bigger is better for the two-way ANOVA for effect size. And that's really always the case. The bigger the effect size, the better. And notice here, there's a pattern that you can see that's consistent. The smaller the p-value, the small p-value is good because that indicates the groups are significant. And the smaller the p-value, really you can think of it as the more significant they are. So notice here that the smallest p-value, 0.011, happens to have the largest effect size of the three, 0.28. The second smallest p-value has the second largest effect size at 0.22. And finally, the third largest p-value, which is the interaction, has the third largest effect size at 0.18. Next, what I'd like to do is go ahead and interpret each of these tests, they were all significant, recall, and see which group was higher than which for our main effects volume and study method, and then take a brief look at the interaction as well. So for volume, recall it was significant, P was less than 0 0.05, and if we go down here, what's called estimated marginal means, this table gives our means for our two volume groups. So notice here that the no volume group had a mean of 79.083, and the high volume group had a mean of 72.917. Now recall that this in fact was significant because the p-value, once again, was 0.011. So we know that these means in this table are in fact significantly different. So we look at these two means and you want to ask yourself which one's higher. Well you can see in fact 79 is higher than 72. So that means that the no music group had significantly higher exam performance than the high volume group. Moving on to study method. Once again, study method was significant with a p-value of 0 0.029. And if we go down to this table, you can see that for study method, well, ask yourself which group did better on the exam. Notice that the spaced study method has a higher mean at 78.58 compared to cramming, which had a mean of 73.42, rounding to two decimal places. So this indicates that the people who use space studying did better on the exam than those who used cramming. Now I'd like to take a few moments to see how we can write our results using APA format, the format of the American Psychological Association. Recall our first test, the test of volume was significant. So we could state that there was a significant volume effect on exam scores. And then notice here I have F, 1 comma 20 in parentheses and that corresponds to the degrees of freedom for volume 1 comma 20 you can see right here 1 and 20 and then that f is equal to 0.785 with a p value of 0 0.011 so you can see here that's where i get these values f120 equals 785 and then P is equal to 0 0.011 and I have a partial eta squared of 0.28 which you can see right there in the table. And here we can see that none, that is the group that studied with no volume, had higher exam scores than high volume. We have 79.08 versus 72.92 which you can see right in this table here. Moving on to our next test for study method, recall that was in fact significant once again, and we could state the following. 